Hi, I'm Moses Sutton, and I'm standing here next to a carob tree on Barfilia Hill in Modi'in. So the carob tree is large, it's beautiful, nice and shady, but most importantly, it also has delicious uh, fruit. You can see here growing on the tree, they're green because they are not ripe yet. They usually ripen in the end of the summer, and then they turn brown and look like this one. And the carobs are most famous for providing sustenance for Rabi Shim'on Bar Yochai, the traditional hero of Lagla Omer, when he was hiding out in a cave from the Romans for 13 years. years. But before we talk about that story, I want to give a little introduction about Lagla Omer. So the day perhaps is most famously known as the day that the plague ended, the infamous plague that took the lives of 24,000 of Rabi Akiba's students. It ended on this day, so therefore we celebrate. In modern times, uh, Speculation has arisen that this plague of Rabi Akiba's students was actually a rebellion, the rebellion of Bar Kokhba. It's known that Rabi Akiba thought of Bar Kokhba to be the Messiah, and if he was a supporter of Bar Kokhba, the speculation says that the students were really fighters in the rebellion, and if they stopped dying on that day, then perhaps some victory was achieved by Bar Kokhba, even though, of course, the rebellion ended tragically. Uh, nonetheless, Today in Israel, many celebrate Bar Kokhba, therefore, as a hero of Lagla Omer. Uh, he's a popular figure in, in many circles, because, specifically because he's not so much a religious figure, but rather a fighter. But for hundreds of years, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was traditionally the hero of Lagla Omer, because this was the day that he died on. And it is stated in the Zohar that on the day that he died, he revealed the deepest secrets of the Torah. Now, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is mentioned many, many times in the Mishnah. There he is known simply as Rabbi Shimon. And he has this position um, regarding the laws of Shabbat, that one is not to be held accountable for transgressions that were done without intention to violate a prohibition. So, for example, one does melacha without the intention to do that action, he is not held accountable. And this philosophy of the intention of man being what is most important in the eyes of the Almighty, he expanded to other things as well. So he famously once said about the Roman Empire, who controlled the land of Israel in his generation, that although they did many things, they made amenities that the Jewish people benefited from, such as bathhouses and roads, they're not to be given any credit for that. Their intention was not to help us, and therefore they deserve no credit for what they did. And the Roman authorities were actually very angry that he said that, and he was forced to flee. And that is when him and his son, El Azar, hid out in a cave near a village of Piki'ain. And there, they sustained themselves by water from a spring in the cave, and by eating carobs from a carob tree that grew outside of the cave. Now, carobs, they grow all over Israel. They're known in Hebrew as harubim. The tree is Aitza harub. And they're mentioned many, many times in the Mishnah and the Gemara, although they're not mentioned at all in the Tanakh. Although, there is a Midrash in Vaikra Rabbah that says that they're hinted to in one particular verse in the book of Yeshaya. And it's a passage that we actually read on the Shabbat before to Shabbat, Haftarat Hazon. And there it says, in chapter 1, verses 20 21, Im tobu if you listen, you will eat the goodness of the land. But if you do not listen and you rebel, then you will be eaten by the sword. Now the Midrash says, alternatively, this can be read as You will eat the sword. Now how does one eat the sword? It's talking about eating the harub, the fruit that is shaped like the harub, like the sword. Now don't think of a straight swords with uh, sharp on both edges but rather the type of sword that was used in the ancient Near East, where this outer edge was the blade, the sharp part that was used for slicing up your enemies. Alternatively, another etymology for harub is that it comes from haraba. Haraba means dry, or dry land. For example, in the splitting of the sea, it says, Vayasim tayam la haraba. And the fruit is very dry. Perhaps that's why it has a long shelf life. It has low water content. Uh, and therefore, even though they, they ripen in the summer or in the early fall, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his son, they could have kept the stockpile because it stays good for a long, long time. Now, interestingly, there's 
a place known as Horeb. Perhaps it was a very dry place, but it's famous because that's where Mount Sinai was. And that's where the Torah was given. And Rabbi Shalom Bar Yochai, while he was sustaining himself with the Caribs, the Harubim, they were learning the Torah that was given in Horeb. And that's when they delved into the deep secrets of the Torah. So getting back to Lagla Omer, we have these two personas, Shimon Bar Kochba and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And the truth is they both come from a very similar place. After all, they're both named Shimon. They're both, in a sense, students of Rabbi Akiba. They both spend a lot of time hiding out from the Romans in caves. But they represent two very different approaches. They represent different answers to the question of Jewish survival in a hostile world. The soldier or the scholar. Or as my friend Nahel Selavan put it, the way of the sword or the way of the spirit. And on Lag Longer, perhaps we can use the opportunity to reflect on these two paradigms and think what place each one has with us, what place each one has in Israel today, and to perhaps be amazed by the fact that they're both somehow represented in this funny looking brown fruit. So thanks for watching and have a great day.